be seated in the presence of the Lord. Many of us tonight, I truly believe we must reevaluate our calls. Can you say amen? amen? I want you to know that it will cost us highly to follow Jesus. Let me say that again to my back row church. It will cost us highly to follow the Lord. Let me set the record straight tonight. Coming to church is not a fad. It's not an end thing to do. Can 10 people say amen? I think it's critical tonight to talk about foundation, Elder Hardy, and some basics that we can be absolutely clear about our walk with Christ. Is that all right? So here, in this text, Jesus wants to teach us, watch this, about being his follower. Are you with me? He wants us to know that there is a high price attached in his service. You're going to see it in a minute. So, looking contextually, Jesus had just revealed his identity to his disciples and he just told them that he must die for their sins on the cross. Are you here with me? Now, as soon as that information is given out, Jesus called his disciples to come around him and he also caused the crowds to gather near so that they can hear as well. Then Jesus begins to speak, watch this, and as he does, Jesus tells the gathered crowd that there is a high price attached to being his follower. The words of Jesus in these verses strike a death blow to the cheap and easy, feel-good religion that is being passed on in Christianity today. Now, if I was a public relation man, I wouldn't be able to stand Jesus coming around my crowd because every time a crowd came around Jesus, Jesus would tell them it's a high price attached and people would vanish. Y'all not helping me here. Most people, if they knew how hard it was to follow Jesus for real though, most of you will run out here. You'll get it in a minute. So many believe that they have um, Jesus and, and they believe that they can have Jesus and have the world too. Quiet church, but I'm preaching. And many believe, watch this, that they can claim, claim to, to be followers of Christ while they live their lives as they please. You're going to see it. So you got to get this tonight, Danita, because if a person is going to be a follower of Christ... There is a high price to pay. I can't hear nobody, but I'm going to preach tonight like it's my last time tonight. So let's take some, 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 some time tonight to unpack these verses. All right? So we can see what Jesus has to say to us. Letter A, it's on the screen. Jesus shares a pattern. Say that with me. Jesus shares a pattern. Look at verse 34, it's on the screen, Mark 8, 34, King James Version. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. So let me remind you tonight, Travis, that not everyone who claims to be a Christian can truly be called a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. Everybody that claims to be a Christian can't truly afford to call themselves as a disciplined disciple of Christ. Those who would be his disciples have requirements. Can you say amen? That we must meet in this life. Let's look and share some of these requirements tonight. Are y'all ready for this? There are some requirements as a disciple that I want to give you tonight. Number one is on the screen. Come after me. Jesus said, now, whosoever will come after to me. When, when Jesus, watch this, said these words, his men, watch this, y'all, surely remembered when he first called them to follow him. Some two or three um, half years ago, they had left everything, watch this, to follow Jesus. They had left family. They had left friends. They had left, come on y'all, occupations. They had left everything else in their lives 
to go with Jesus. Oh, that's a high price. My God, Peter was fishing, dropped everything that he was doing and said, I'm going with Jesus. Jesus walked by a tax booth and Matthew, glory to God, was getting money and Jesus walked by and said, follow me. And Matthew forgot everything, left everything behind and went with Jesus. I come to tell you, it's a high price to follow Jesus. Jesus told a woman or a man, he said, listen here, um, I want you to follow me. And the person said, well, I got to go bury my daddy. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Take up your cross and follow me. He, the problem with Christians today, we put Jesus on the back burner when he's supposed to be the forefront of your life. You have to forsake everything and walk with the living God. Y'all not helping me here. Sometimes we have so many excuses why we can't do this, why we can't do that, why we can't go here, why we can't go there. And Jesus says, come after me. It's a high price to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So then, to the rest of the crowd that day, this was a call to the new life or a call to the new birth. Somebody shout new birth. It was a call to make a personal, watch this, here it is. It was a call to the crowd, watch this, to make a personal commitment to Jesus Christ. Oh, that's a taboo word in the Christianity movement today. It was called um, for them to turn their backs on everything else to go after Jesus. Quiet church in here, tell somebody it's a high price attached. Tell somebody one more time, you got to give up everything <laughs> to be a real true disciple. You're going to see it in a minute. Uh -huh. It's a high price. So essentially being born again or getting saved, whatever you want to call it tonight, is far more than praying a prayer at an altar. Uh-huh. I'm going a little deeper with y'all today. Uh, you got to see this. Follow me. I'm going somewhere. A lot of people come to an altar and pray a prayer and profess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Y'all not helping me here, but, but true salvation is about a radical commitment. Uh, Y'all not getting this there. Quiet church. It's about a radical commitment to leave the old life behind and to follow Jesus into a new, a very different type of life. Come on, y'all. Can you say amen? So being born again is about being made a new creation. Come on. Let me prove it. Look at the screen. Y'all still looking at me funny. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creation. A new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. Can you say amen? Y'all are a dry church if I ever seen one. After I read a scripture, open your mouth and say amen. I know you know when I'm done because I pause and let you know that I'm done. Can you say amen? amen. So it's a new creation. You just don't profess Christ and don't make a change in your life. Come on now. I'm wondering if you're really saved if you're doing the same thing over and over again and been in the church over five years. You need to get saved again if you're still doing the same thing because you can profess that Jesus is Lord but never change. And salvation will change you. Come on, you're going to see it in a minute. Wow, I'm new creation you see you can pray the sinner's prayer all day watch this and not get saved i'm gonna help y'all theology today glory to god quiet church you can walk the romans road and you can take the journey through john or or go through any other method that man says bring salvation but the fact is you only get saved when god convicts you of your sins and draw you to himself y'all not helping me pray all you want to if you're not convicted by your sins and you're not drawn by god you're not saved if you can keep on sinning and laying around and holding around and don't feel nothing i wonder if you're saved only way you get saved if you convicted by your sins and God Almighty draws you to himself. You're going to see it in a minute. Let me prove it.
it. It's on the screen. John 6, 44. King James Version. Stop going before me. No man can come to me except the Father which have sent me draw him. Yeah. Missed it. And I will raise him up at the last day. I know you wouldn't get it. Back on the screen. John 6, 43, 44. New message Bible. Come on. Jesus said, don't bicker among yourselves over me. You are not in charge here. The father who sent me is in charge. He draws people to me. That's the only way you'll ever come. You missed that, see? You, you, you missed that. I don't care what type of perfunctory you do unless God draw you. You say, and when God draw you, you can't live any kind of way and don't be convicted of the stuff you do that you know is wrong. I'm, I'm trying to help you get saved. Folk come up here and we say the prayer with them and they never draw by God. They just want a brownie point with God so they can sin some more until God kill them. And I got news for you. If you're not saved, the Spirit of God is going to be withdrawn one day and you're going to hell. I need to preach tonight. If you ain't saved, you're going to hell. If you're sinning and not convicted, God haven't drawn you to himself. And if you want to get saved, you need to get saved right now. Okay, you're going to see it. Y'all not helping me. You get saved when God convicts you of your sins and draws you to himself. And when he draws you, you respond through faith and salvation then takes place. How y'all getting this? Look at the screen. Through faith. Watch this. I'm going to show you on the screen. For by grace are you saved through faith and not that of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man shall boast and the people of God ought to clap your hands for that word come on it's a gift from God God draws you not by a profession not by reading a sinner's prayer you can read a sinner's prayer and don't feel nothing because you're not sincere about being wrong. You just want God to give you a rabbit foot because you think it's a lucky child. If it was lucky, the rabbit would have his foot. But when you surrender to God, God help me preach in here. God draws you so that you can't live the way you used to live anymore. You become a new creation. Don't tell me you're saved and you're still acting like you were yesterday. You ain't saved. And if you don't get saved, you'll be thrown in the lake of fire. Quiet church. I'm coming back to the basics. I'm coming back to foundation. Glory to God. We can talk about everything we want. We can share how to make lovers your lover. Ten ways to get to lovers. But there's only one way to get to God. That's by conviction of your sins. And through Jesus, God draws man. We're not witty enough. We're not smart enough. We can't do nothing. We can't emotionally entice them to come. God got the job. Can you say amen? So look now. True salvation. I said true salvation. Watch this. Here it is. It's not some sort of easy believing that leaves you unchanged. Quiet church, y'all. Yeah. And it's not an easy believing salvation that leaves you unchanged. I'm tired of charming you. I want you changed. Come on, say amen. Because when you're changed, you walk in victory. Quiet church, but I'm preaching here. True salvation, when it happens in your life, it will make such a radical change in your life 
that you will begin to act like a different person.